Well, um, Nick and I, and Ben at the time, we, we were probably about six or so years out of Pentagram, and Pentagram was quite a kind of insular place, and we didn't really have any contacts, we just did what we did. And I remember a few of our peers at the time, like GBH and Hattrick, were just starting around at the same time, and they had a lot of kind of friends from where they worked in the past, like the partners, you know, were supporting them. And we thought, well, actually, we need to start stop being set up our own asses and, and talking to people. And I think Nick wrote a letter, random letter, to Michael Wolf, and um, Michael Wolf popped up in our studio one day. Yeah. Um, uh, the other letter I wrote the same day was to Steve Jobs, and we got no reply. So Steve, yeah. Anyway. Um, uh, yeah, that's so. We, we wrote to Michael. Michael came in. Uh, we sort of did what we always do, which is get present our work to him. And he was just this wonderful, warm, sort of friendly human being. And we just we Clicked. sort of hit it off. And he uh, he then sort of put us in pitches against people, um, both of which we won. One was for Mothercare, the retailer, and the other one was for INSEAD, the uh, sort of uh, European slash global business school. And uh, the sort of story went on from there. So. We, we hang out with Michael and Michael hangs out with us. What I've learned from Michael is keep the bigger picture in mind. Um, because while you're sitting around a table and you're presenting your work, actually there's always a tomorrow and, and there, there are always new opportunities. So he, uh, we've sat in meetings where we've presented work and he said, well, it could be like that, but tomorrow it may change. And, um, and I think it's just that sort of keeping an open mind, keeping the bigger picture in mind and, uh, and doing things organically rather than a sort of <coughs> process-driven um, sort of mechanical way of doing things. This is more around conversations and thought rather than stage one, process this. I'm going to draw you a triangle. I'm going to draw you uh, some pillars. I'm going to do this. He, he's, there's none of that goes on. Or if it does, it just goes on in his mind. And uh, we've almost learned nothing about branding, more about being a good human being. I, mean, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I would say we've learned empathy. And as Nick said, a much bigger picture and a very holistic way. I mean, Michael's, and he would say this is 99.99% intuition. I think Nick and I are very intuitive designers, which is why we just click. There's no real process with Michael. We just do it. It's all about the feeling. It's the gut feeling and how you interpret that. And Michael has a beautiful, articulate way of interpreting a feeling or a thought. And I think we, 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 we did that anyway, but we've just learned how to express our thoughts and feelings better in the world of branding and design. I think running a design company in London is always full of um, challenges. It's not really easy. You know, Nick and I weren't trained to run a, a design company. We did it because it was our passion and we, we loved what we did and we wanted to do it on our own. So over the years, you learn to run a business, you have accountants, you have project managers, you have strategy people, and you have people. You know, people management is actually a very difficult thing. It's, you know, it's more than graphic designers. And then you kind of have a space, you have to pay for that space, you have an overhead. And I think what's happening in London at the moment with this gentrification is making it a lot harder for smaller graphic design companies or anyone in the creative industry to actually financially sustain themselves um, as, as, a, as, as a practicing company. Um, you have to earn more money because all the rent's going up, but saying that, um, I think the challenges have always been the same. It, it's to be good, it's to be creative, and it's to be the best out there. There's a lot of competition, and as long as you love what you do and you still come to work with joy and butterflies, I think you're gonna carry on doing the thing you, you love to do. And I think Nick and I love, or we, we know we love what we're doing, so um, it's not really a challenge, it's just getting on with it. I think look, the other challenge I think we've got is um, staying relevant, and because businesses want to innovate and they want to move on, and so as a studio we need to move with the times and we need to keep uh, abreast of current thinking, current affairs, and uh, what's going on You know, this year, <coughs> we're talking about virtual reality, so we're messing around with that a bit. Um, and we just need to make sure we're working with people that, that can help us 
execute stuff in new ways. Mm -hmm. So for us, one of the biggest challenges is as Alan and I grow older, that um, the kids we've got in the background, uh, the people we work with, and the people that you know we work with externally, um, have a good handle on what's coming next, what's the future, because that's the biggest question, is what's the future? So for MB, we just want to make sure that we've got one in it. <laughs>